Good morning. So before we start, I have to tell you that currently I am conflicted. A couple of weeks ago, a month or so ago, I told you that because of sound difficulties, I was going to sit on this stool until we dramatically improved our sound. And yet, I have heard from a phenomenal number of you, specifically in this service, how much you dislike me sitting on a stool. So just for the record, um, I am going to start on the stool to honor my pledge and commitment to 915 and to this church. And yep, that's ended. <laughs> All right. So I'm not exactly sure when I began to be fascinated with building. Uh, it might have been in college, actually. My senior year of college, I worked a, a night job, midnight to eight or midnight to noon, uh, in a breading factory. And then I would come home from that job and would be part of the construction crew for my twin brother's house. Now, for the record, I don't know anything about construction, certainly didn't then, and yet I found myself on the construction crew building my twin brother's house. That, that's not something that you, like, build and then go, see ya, and you leave, because sadly, he still lives in that house today, and so it's kind of important that we did it right. Now, the other piece of data you probably ought to know is that the building crew consisted of a whole bunch of people down the line, but at least in the framing stages, consisted predominantly of my twin brother, my grandfather, and me. That is not the crew you want to build your house. At least my grandpa was a skilled builder. He had built several houses. In fact, he and my parents built the house that I grew up in. They had built a couple of houses for them. So he at least knew what he was doing. And I can remember that in the midst of building my twin brother's house, that my grandfather took great care to try and not only teach us some skills and some terminology, which I have forgotten, and some things about what it means to build a house, but I specifically remember his incredible dedication to as we built this house that we made sure walls were straight and corners were braced properly and were solid. I remember him taking extreme care to make sure that this house was well constructed. Yeah? I also remember that we did the framing. You know, the stick pieces and, and the other stick pieces. But we didn't touch the foundation. See, while my grandfather was a master builder and had built multiple homes, he didn't touch the foundation. No, we brought in special experts to lay the foundation. Why? Because it doesn't matter how strong you make the corners or how perfectly level or perpendicular or, or plumb the walls were. If the foundation was flawed, the house was in trouble. Yeah? Ross, I know you're building a house right now. Make sure the foundation is solid. That's what Paul talks about here in the letter to the Corinthians. If you've been with us, you know that we're working through this letter. The Apostle Paul writes to this church in Corinth. He, he started the church. God did some good things through him, and then he went away, and the church kind of went off the rails. And, and Paul is now writing a letter to correct some of their craziness. In fact, today we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and already... Up to this point, in the previous chapters, Paul has already on multiple occasions corrected the church for being divided. Already now, Paul has multiple times said to the church, kind of, this is my paraphrase, knock it off, divisions have no place in the body of Christ. In other words, to summarize for you, there is no room for your personal opinions to trump the word of God. There is no room for your desires to allow you to pick and choose what you like or what you don't like. And now today, Paul is going to use this imagery of construction in speaking to the church. Now, it would be flawed if we read this section on construction, so to speak, without realizing the context of what Paul is speaking to. Paul is speaking to a church that has begun to erect the walls of its spiritual house incorrectly. 
They are building things that are flawed. They are building things that are self-centered. They are building things that are focused on something other than the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's this that Paul is going to speak to. So go ahead and grab your Bible. Or if you didn't bring one, get one out of the pew in front of you. Or if you just really would prefer, grab your worship guide. First Corinthians chapter 3, beginning with verse 10, and Paul says, According to the grace given me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care, you hear this? Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. In other words, that's the that's the foundation that Paul has proclaimed that allowed predominantly these, this Jewish church to realize the beauty of the gospel of Jesus that is apart from them, that is transformative beyond their ability to understand. He says, that's the foundation. Remember, that's the bedrock. That's what has already been built. But take care, he says. Take care for what you're building on top of it. Take care for the house you're building. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation, verse 12, with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest for the day. We'll disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. You get the picture? Paul says to the church, guys, don't forget what has been the base of all that we've done together. And the base is not all of this human stuff that we so easily get entangled into and we think somehow should define our religious experience. The base is Jesus Christ and him crucified. It's what we just talked about. It's the fact that you're a mess, but because you're a mess, God came into the world. And because God came into the world, you've been declared no longer a mess through his son Jesus. That, that's the foundation, that this isn't about us anymore. It's now about Jesus. And Paul draws them back to this and says, that's, that's the beautifully laid foundation of the house. But the question for you, church, in Corinth, and the question for you, church, in Cape Girardeau, is this. What are you building upon that foundation? What, what are you building? You build them with gold, silver, or precious stones. By the way, that's the first set of the two sets that Paul is going to lay out by way of construction materials. The first set is gold, silver, and precious stones. He says, you build them with that stuff? That's, that's some good stuff to build with. And then he segues into the second set, by the way, which is a less desirable thing to build with. He says, are you building with wood or straw? Hey. Each one's work will be manifest. In other words, the type of building that you are constructing upon this foundation of Jesus will be revealed. How? By fire. By hardships. By death, potentially. So I'm not going to lie to you today. I'm just going to tell you straight up. The question is, what are you building? individually what kind of spiritual house so to speak are you building upon the foundation of Christ and then a secondary question that kind of flows out of the first question that is what kind of spiritual house are we building together that flows out of the foundation of Jesus Christ and him crucified or are we just consumed with all kinds of earthly things, as Pastor Mark kind of so eloquently said last week, the shift from earthly flesh eyes to faith-filled spiritual eyes in the way that we see things. What are, you, what, are you, what are you building? If you've been here any length of time, here's the little nugget for you. You know full well, I'm not going to answer that for you. But I hope you'll think about it. 
It's something I've thought extensively about the last few days. Some of you know that, uh, and I only share this because we talked about it in December together. Uh, Friday morning, Jill received a text from her mom that her dad had been taken to the hospital, and before Jill got to the hospital, her dad died. Uh, sadly, got a text from one of you this morning that last night, your mom died. Greeted one of you at the door back here and found out that your parent died this weekend or the last week or so. I, I can't speak for you, but, but I, I've kind of made a pattern, as you know, in my preaching life that if I'm thinking it and chewing on it and it's consuming me, well, you get brought into the loop. So since Friday morning when we got that word about Jill's dad, I have been thinking about this text and I've been wondering what kind of life I'm building. Because I now have the unfortunate place with my family of looking back on my father-in-law's life and saying, what kind of life did he build? Because the fire has come and gone and he was taken with it. And now what kind of life did he build? And what kind of life am I building on the gospel? And am I consumed with just a bunch of earthly junk? And let's be blunt, that's all it is. Or am I consumed with higher things, the things of Jesus, and in building a spiritual house on a foundation that can only be built on the gospel of Jesus? And my guess is, at least for you other two families that have lost loved ones, you've probably been asking the same questions. So what are you building on? Or more specifically, we know what you're building on, and that's the foundation of Jesus. What are you building with? Saturday after um, I took the kids to school, Jill was at the hospital. At this point, I didn't know that Jill's dad had died yet, found that out, went with the Jill and her mom to the funeral home uh, to start making arrangements there. And we realized, oh, crud, the kids have a half day today. Um, we probably should go get our kids. And Jill and her mom were still, you know, doing what you have to do at the funeral home. And so I said, I'll just go get them. And Jill said, well, they don't know yet. And I said, yeah, that stinks. And so I picked up my kids and ushered them out to the car. Sorry for those of you at St. Paul that I didn't greet. By the way, my mind was in a little bit different place Friday morning. And I pushed my kids in the car. And, and Micah said, Dad, how's Grandpa? Because we had prayed for him on the way to school in the car. And I said, buddy, Grandpa didn't make it. Grandpa died. Now, my son's pretty emotional, by the way, so please don't go up to him after church today and make comments to him uh, unless you want him to cry all over you. And without flinching, and I, I don't tell you this out of pride, I tell you this out of beauty, without flinching, my son spoke a word of scripture to me. And he said, Dad, that's all we have. That's where we find our comfort, even in times like this. Now, I don't know what you're building, and I'm not 100% sure what I'm building, but in the course of a couple hours, I got to look at a man who lived his life faithfully and left behind a legacy of Jesus. And then I got introduced to a son who is trying very hard and seems to be doing pretty darn well of building a life that is solely focused on Jesus. And I am reminded yet again, and I remind you yet again, that it doesn't matter what you're building. It does. It does matter what you're building, but whether you're building a studly fortress on top of faith or whether you're building some little shack, the foundation stands. The foundation is what we lean into. The foundation is what we trust when things are pretty crappy. Yeah? So what are you building? on this foundation of Jesus. That you get to chew on this week. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, you are good and gracious and you have come to us and reminded us again today that our life is no longer ours. Our life has been taken by you. It is hidden in you. That through the waters of baptism we were tied to you. That you laid a foundation that is unshakable and now Lord I ask that you strengthen and stretch encourage kick 
nudge us all that we would begin to realize that our lives only have meaning if they're anchored in you, only have purpose if they're built in you, Lord. Help us to build strong, enduring spiritual houses on the foundation of Jesus. We pray this in his name and God's people said,